My name is Josh Todd. Um, I head up marketing at Localytics. Localytics is a mobile engagement platform. We help thousands of apps, and really our secret sauce is we have tons of data on all of the users, and what we do is we help companies have really engaging, smart um, engagement strategies. Uh, all right, so we're, we're up. And this thing works? All right, great. Um, what, what's been great is listening to some of the speakers today, you know, especially the last session how everybody's focused on data, and that's really refreshing to see because um, it's so critical. Making sure that you're using that data, using the insights from that data to drive really meaningful engagement, and that's what I'm going to talk a lot about today. We'll start with the mobile engagement crisis. We'll talk briefly about the life cycle, which we've heard, heard a bunch about, but really focus in on engagement and specifically push messaging. So I don't want to spend too much time on the space, right? We know that uh, mobile overtook the desktop in terms of uh, engagement with digital assets, and then apps are dominating the mobile space. You know, 51,000 apps downloaded every 60 seconds. We know 41 uh, apps installed on the average smartphone. Right? That's a ton of competition. It's great that this new channel has been created for brands to communicate with their users and build really deep relationships, but there's a ton of competition. And if we think about it, we're seeing some signs right now that are pretty worrisome about the space. And I think as marketers, as app owners, we need to make sure that we are getting ahead of this and that we're being really smart about how we engage users. I'm sure this happens happened to you, it's happened to me. You know, here we have a message about swimwear uh, obviously being delivered at the wrong time. Now, I'll give you, maybe it's a super targeted message and they know that the person was just shopping because they're going on a vacation. But sadly, we see too many of these messages that are delivered completely out of context. That's really the crux of where the mobile engagement crisis comes from. So we've, we've gone out and we've surveyed consumers and we've got a better understanding of what they're looking for, what they want. They really want immediate value every single time. And one of the reasons is because they believe there are infinite number of apps out there. They believe that the switching costs are low, they can leave your app, they can go to another app that will serve their needs better. They also want a seamless experience across mobile devices. They want you to know if they're on a, a tablet versus a mobile phone. They want you to know it's the same user and they want you to know what you've, what you've done with them in the past and they expect you to deliver personalized experiences. So what we've seen over the last couple of years is really that experience bar, the demands from consumers continue to grow as they continue to get more sophisticated and we need to make sure that we're stepping up to deliver for them. This is creating some kind of opposing forces, right? They want personalized experiences but there's also privacy concerns. We have the power to do mobile right. There's so much data behind everything that our users are doing, but there's the temptation to do it wrong, to spam our users. I'll share some stats on um, how this is still happening, how it's very real. And finally, we see a fair amount of brands that are applying what they used to do on the web, and they're rinsing and repeating, saying here's the playbook, and they're applying it to mobile. But everybody in this room knows, because you guys are on the uh, front edge that that's going to be a, a strategy that's going to fail. Mobile is different in many ways. It's very real time, it's very personal, and we'll have a missed opportunity if we don't use everything we know about our users. Here's some, some scary stats, and this is really where the whole mobile engagement crisis kind of came from. You know, people have talked earlier today, 22% of apps only used once. 35% right? of app, uh, of push messages are not segmented. Right? That's that example that we saw earlier. What kind of message could you be sending to all of your users that is appropriate for all of them at the exact same time? It's very rare. I've tried to think of use cases that could, could actually apply to that, and there's, they're few and far between. Uh, we've gotten better because a year ago that number was 45%. 45% of push messages were sent to the entire user base. So we're getting better here, but 35% is far too large a number for us to still be sending blast messages to our users. 50% of people are viewing push as annoying. It's because they're not getting those targeted messages because we're not using the data that we know about them to make them welcome messages as opposed to annoying messages. And that's, you know, annoying messages is the number one reason why people uninstall apps. And we have all the information right in our hands to make sure we get that right. 48% of people opting out of push. I'll talk a little bit later about how we can improve that. Uh, but Forrester quotes, um, the most popular metric for determining mobile success, you know, downloads. I mean, downloads is, is a vanity metric. 
really, if we're stuck at thinking about downloads as what success is, and we know that 22% of them are only going to use the app once, we're set up for failure. We're tracking the wrong metric. We have to get downstream. We have to understand which users are we driving that are engaged so that we can optimize our acquisition. So how do we shift to the right path? It's all about being data driven. And that's really been the topic of discussion today. It's using all the data you have on your users to make sure that you're driving really personalized experiences because you know your users deeply. How many people feel like they've nailed their, their mobile or, or app strategy here? Anybody wanna? No, right? It's, it's crickets no matter where. Uh, no matter where I ask that question, right? We're all still learning, we're all still getting smarter. Um, one way that um, we found, and I saw it in the earlier presentations, is to break down an app strategy into kind of a simplistic view, which is the life cycle. Everything that you will do to improve and grow your app fits into acquiring users, engaging, growing, and ultimately retaining them. But when we talk about retention, it's not about win back strategies or, or things like that. Retention is really about making sure you're engaging them long before it becomes a win back. Now, we don't have time to go through all those today, and some of the other groups are focused on retention. So I wanted to focus a little bit on uh, engaging and growing, and I'll try to be pretty quick because I think uh, lunch and a break is after me. So we'll, we'll go through some best practices for making sure that you're being smart about how you're engaging your users. So here we have an example from Nike. Pretty straightforward. Right? We have a push message over here, and we have an in-app in message over there. Pretty straightforward. Hey, Katie, you set a challenge in September. Come back and complete it. Great. Pretty straightforward message. But what's behind that? It can be deceivingly complex. First, they're using, you know, you're using event behavior. So they're tracking the event behavior, using that information to make sure that they are getting to a very qualified audience. Then they're going to be you know, A-B testing that message. They're going to take in information that they have maybe from other sources. Anywhere else that they have information on this user, they need to bring that to bear on all of their messages. That can help drive you know, dynamic personalization. Then they're going to make sure that they're sending it at the right time. They can understand somebody's time zone. They know where they are geographically. They can make sure that they, they know if the person is when they um, tend to visit the app. They can deliver that message to them in a time that makes the most sense for that user. Then they're going to track you know, views, opens, clicks, but we know that's not good enough. Now they're going to get into influence on engagement, conversion, retention. They can measure all of these things as it relates to this one message. And then they're going to tie an in-app message to it. And with that, they're going to have deep linking to the right, the right places based on the behavior of that user. Some custom HTML, going to track everything they get out of it. Right? So these, this is a simple message that goes out, but behind it is a lot of critical thinking. Those are all of the things that make it really important that make a message actually welcomed because you're using all the information you have on your users. You're not, this message wouldn't apply to everybody else. Right? So they're doing a good job making sure that they're using all the information they have on those users to get really targeted. Now segmentation, because that stat bothers me so much, 35% are still um, you know, broadcast or blasted out to their users. So let's look at you know, little, just go through some stats on what we see from thousands of apps. What do the metrics look like when you send out a segmented message versus a blast message? So we'll use a sports content app. They could send a message out to their entire user base, sure. Or they can break that group down. Now, you don't have to get super granular necessarily out of the gate. But starting with what you have, maybe you know what their favorite teams are. You know, is it uh, Manchester United, Liverpool? See, I'm trying to yeah, make the... UK connection here, you know, from the States. Um, but they have information on those users, where those users have been in their app. Use that information first. Figure out what their favorite things are and start segmenting your message that way because it pays off. When we look at broadcast messages, we have a 3% click-through rate on average for push messages and a 15% conversion rate uh, to the desired action. Now, if we look at the targeted or segmented message, we have a 7% open rate. 54% conversion rate. That's a huge difference for your business. So let's take, a, take an app with 100,000 users. Let's apply that math to this app. Here we have 3,000 open messages versus seven. And on conversions, it's 450 versus almost 4,000. If you think about how all of your messages can be targeted and segmented to your users, 
you're going to see these kind of results. Next thing we'll talk about is we'll talk a little bit about um, push. Um, you know, the, the last presenter uh, had some good information about onboarding, so I want to use a, a couple examples of somebody we see doing it successfully in places where it's not successful. You know, if you can get people to enable push messages, 171% um, more app launches. Right? So we know that this is a great channel to get to them, and it represents your most engaged users. So we see, on average, 52% of apps um, of users have push enabled on, on a particular app. That's great, more than half of the audience. But sadly, that's 48% that don't. So how do you get a bigger piece of this pie? Let's look at a bad example. So here, and, and we've redacted the um, brand to uh, protect the guilty, but on the very first screen, we talked about onboarding before, they're serving up a message, generic message saying, you know, blank would like to send you notifications. Now they can control timing, and they haven't done that. They're serving it up before they've shown the value. So let's look at a good example. Retail Me Not does a really good job. And we talked to, uh, you know, the earlier speakers were talking about making sure you're sharing your value prop. So the first thing they do is they show a very welcome screen. And then they ask you to, big call to action, choose your favorite stores. Now they've got you engaged. Now they've got you actually feeling that value, that the reason why you downloaded that app. They're tying that together right out of the gate. Now they're going to ask you. And they're going to make sure that they, where they can, they're tailoring that message uh, right to that value prop. Want us to notify you when your favorite stores have new coupons? Yes. Right, so they've really done a good job of making sure that they're going to get the largest piece of that push pie. Now another, um, another thing to think about in, is in-app messages, and uh, it seems like Push messages get all the PR these days. Uh, everybody's focused in on push. And push is a really powerful tool. Um, but make sure that you're not under, underestimating the importance of in-app messages. In-app messages, when based on an event, so again, using information that the user is giving you, four times higher conversion rates. It can be a really powerful way to either orient people to a new experience, changes in the app, move them forward if they've got installed in a purchase. It's a fantastic tool. It's in your control, and it's a great way to make sure that you're using that information to deliver relevant experiences to your users. So I think there's, you know, there's kind of a, a, a public service announcement, a, a, a call to action for all of us. We have to avert this mobile engagement crisis. If we think about 41 apps on the average phone, 35% of those apps sending you uh, untargeted, unsegmented messages that are blasting at you, we're going to break this channel. Right? I know as a consumer how annoyed I get when I get messages that aren't targeted to me. And people are going to start uninstalling apps or at least turning off push notifications. And if we lose that channel to be communicating with users and customers and building stronger relationships based on all the data that they're telling us, they're giving us all the information we need to have meaningful engagement. And if we're ignoring that, we're going to break the channel of push. You know, think about what, what happened to email. In many ways, email is still a fantastic channel to communicate, but it's flawed in a lot of ways because we broke it. We sent out, we saw you know, small returns from sending blast messages out, um, and we did real damage to the channel in terms of using it as a, a marketing channel to build stronger relationships. We can't do the same to push. So my public service announcement is we have to make sure we're using the data to drive really meaningful experiences because it'll be It'll have a much bigger impact, on a positive impact on your business. And we won't break the channel. We'll keep it open. And we'll be able to continue to, to evolve the ways we grow relationships. So that's it. Any questions? There's a, one over there. You speak a lot about engaged users. Are there other, any other ways we can look to leverage them to grow apps and, and sort of generally business success? Yeah, I mean, I think um, tapping into your engaged users is, uh, you know, you got to do everything you can to make sure you're keeping them engaged. Um, one of the ways, one of our customer does, and I heard somebody mention it quickly before, but uh, NHL does a really great job of uh, using their engaged users to drive new users in. They use the net promoter score when they 
ask their customers would they recommend the app. <coughs> the ones that score the highest, they then ask them to uh, rate and review the app. So they're, they're stacking the deck in their favor. Um, so I think that's a good way to use, to further leverage your engaged users. Um, the other thing to think about is, you know, connecting all the other channels, right? So how can you connect your uh, email lists and make sure that's connected to all of the engagement? Because somebody who subscribes to your email newsletter is likely going to be a more engaged user. And if you can connect the activity that they, um, and things they're doing in the app, that's a great way to continue to build that relationship through another channel. Uh, as you're saying, you know, it's, uh, as a marketing channel, we have found it difficult to prove the ROI of it. So the business question is, is, is it considered as cost of doing business or you are still measuring the channel on an ROI basis? Because the more targeted you become, the less you are able to use it. And, the ch uh, and also, it's quite difficult right now with the, uh, with the providers that are out there because they have a different definition and you can't map that in your database. So they're, the channel itself is quite new. Yeah. Um, and if you start limiting the, the number of times that you can use it in terms of relevancy, it doesn't work on an ROI perspective. Yeah, so it's a, it's a, great, it's a great question. I think um, one of the things that's critical is to have, um, however you're delivering your push messages, has to be connected to your analytics. So part of when you're thinking about ROI and a push message, uh, we always talk about getting beyond kind of the um, the vanity metrics and getting to the downstream metrics. So if you think about a, a push campaign, you may be A-B splitting a push campaign. You send one out, it's got a higher click-through rate, a higher conversion rate. The other one uh, is half as effective. Great, you're gonna double down on this one. You can continue to build and grow. The danger there is if you're not connected to, to the downstream analytics, you may actually be increasing churn. If you're not connected, you could really miss that piece of the puzzle. So I think the first thing you need to do in order to truly understand what a push message is doing for you is to make sure you're connected to downstream metrics post the event, post the time that you send a push message. Um, and then in terms of uh, size of audience and getting to the, the right level there, I mean, you know, it's a flaw that I point out in my example is you probably wouldn't have, you know, equal numbers of people to segment. Um, but you can, as you get more granular, get to a large portion of your base that you can send messages to. And the ones, uh, you know, if you're, if you're setting up really smart segmentation, um, a, large, a large portion of your audience, there will be an appropriate message for them. And I think not sending a message to the other people is just as valuable, depending on how you monetize your app. If you're, you know, getting people to stay in your app and you're selling ads to them within your app, um, by not, hitting them with too many messages, you will, you'll keep them for a longer period of time. Hey, last one. Uh, you've spoken a couple of times about killing the channel or breaking the channel. How long have we got left? How long do we have? <laughs> it's imminent. Um, I, I think this is a big year. I mean, I think this is a big year for push. We see more and more um, businesses every month, every quarter continuing to get into the game. Um, and I think uh, this is really a big year for, for push um, specifically. Um, and if we, there's still time, you know, if we, uh, it's not like climate change, maybe, I don't know. But, um, you know, there's definitely still time. And I think as we get smarter, individual apps will prove to be winners um, and they'll start to separate themselves. So I think what you'll see is not breaking the entire channel right away, um, but people losing that ability to, people who don't connect their data, losing the, um, the ability to communicate through push uh, to a greater degree. So I think you'll see individual losers in the short term, um, but, but if we don't change things, uh, you could see uh, more, more backlash over time. Yeah, I think um, you know. I think there's there's definitely uh, some limitations, um, uh, but we can still. I mean, if we think about so, there's there's two sides to that, right? There's the how you're getting people to uh, allow you to, um, you know, allow you to open up that channel. Um, but even if it's just uh, just on Android, and and we can still be much smarter there. That's still a huge percentage of your audience. We have to work within the limitations. 
um, with iOS, but um, I still think there are ways for um, once you get people to engage with you, you still can choose timing when you're when you're asking them and using using everything that you possibly can to be really smart. And then the segmentation still applies to how you're going to be sending those messages once those permissions are open. So um, there's definitely a difference, and there are some limitations. So understanding those and having a good partner is is critical. Okay. Thanks very much. Cool. Thank Great. you. Good talk, Josh.